Hi, I'm Joseph Shore. I'm a graduate student in aerospace engineering at Cornell University, where I work with Dr. Mason Peck on an application of superconductors to the assembly of modular spacecraft. What we're interested in is an effect called magnetic flux pinning, an interaction between certain types of superconductors and magnetic fields. I have here a piece of yttrium barium copper oxide, a ceramic which acts as a superconductor when it's at the temperature of liquid nitrogen. This is a rare earth magnet. It's a very powerful permanent magnet. If you put two of these together, it would be very difficult to put them apart, to pull them apart again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this piece of glass here over this dish in which I've placed the superconductor, and I'm going to put the magnet on top of it. Imagine the magnetic field of this magnet. It looks sort of like, uh, if you were to visualize it, little lines that come out of the top, go around, and then touch back into the other side of the magnet. Right now, those lines penetrate through the superconductor. Right now, the superconductor is at room temperature, so it doesn't have any special properties, and it doesn't interact with the magnetic field. All that changes when we add liquid nitrogen. When nitrogen is liquid, it boils at 77 Kelvin, which is, on the Celsius scale, about 200 degrees colder than the temperature at which water freezes. As I pour the nitrogen around the superconductor, the superconductor is going to go through a transition. What's going to happen is that little currents are excited in the superconductor by the magnetic field. And those little currents will cancel out the magnetic field in a very special way, such that the magnetic field, those little lines you were imagining a moment ago, get trapped or pinned on impurities in the superconductor's crystal structure. The field lines that get trapped in the superconductor now actually exhibit a macroscopic force. One consequence of this force is that I can remove this glass plate here, and the magnet now levitates. It sits above the superconductor, stably, about an inch or an inch and a half away from the surface of the superconductor. And I want to draw your attention to a couple of interesting features of this behavior. First is that it's very stiff. If I were to push on the magnet, there's a strong force that opposes me. And in fact, if I nudge it to the side, it pops right back into place. Even if I give it some wobble, it goes back to its original orientation, and that damps out fairly quickly. There are only a half a dozen or so oscillations there. If I were to uh, try to get an oscillation set up in the vertical direction, it would be strongly damped as well. This stiffness is linear for very small relative displacements between the magnet and the superconductor, but it's very non-linear the larger those displacements get. I'm going to add just a bit more nitrogen to make sure it doesn't boil off here. In fact, the closer I get the magnet and the superconductor, the stronger that stiffness becomes. This interaction is so strong that sometimes you can use the magnet to pick up the superconductor. Now, it looks like I didn't have them pinned close enough to do that, but I can use the magnet to drag the superconductor around in the dish. Now also, if I were to take this magnet and lift it away from the superconductor, as long as that superconductor remains superconducting, I can put it right back where it started. And in fact, the magnet will be attracted back to that initial position where it was first pinned. Finally, notice that this magnet is actually rotating a little bit. I can spin it about its axis. That's because this pinning force doesn't act along any direction in which the magnetic field gradient is zero. This magnet has an axisymmetric field. If you rotate it, you don't change the magnetic field inside the superconductor. We imagine using this effect to link modular spacecraft together. Imagine you were trying to build a space system out of many separate modules. This foam block and the tank here 
could be part of one spacecraft, and this magnet might be part of another space module. And they pin together, much in the same way that in Star Trek, the Starship Enterprise can grab onto another spacecraft and manipulate it without ever touching it with its tractor beams. The difference between tractor beams and this effect, however, is that we're not beaming any energy anywhere. This depends only on the material properties of the magnet and the superconductor.